Hey, what's up guys? It's me, Eric B, and welcome back to the channel. And in this video, we're gonna be installing a quick shifter on the RCA here, and little by little, she's starting to come together. So, let's see what I'm working with. All right, and here's the box and what it looks like when you get it in the mail. And I don't know who else out there is using Anatori, but I recently found out about these guys through some other riders. You know, I know there's some other ones out there like Translogic and Heeltech and you know, just using OEM quick shifters and stuff like that. But I decided to go this route and see how it is. So let's go ahead and open up the box, see what's inside. And each kit obviously is gonna be specific to each bike. And when you open it up, you're gonna see a wiring harness here. And basically what this kit's gonna do, is gonna tap into your uh, spark plug coils um, and then run through the module that way. And then here is the quick shifter little module itself. I don't know if I'm getting it focused here or not, but I went with black. You can get it in different colors like gold, red, blue, stuff like that. And here's your module. And then you also get some additional hardware and, uh, and some shafts and stuff like that if you need it uh, to help you finish completing the install. So uh, let's get cracking. All right guys, so first things first, I'm gonna need to take off some things in order to gain access to some spots I need to work on. As you can see my shifters right under there. And then I'm gonna have to remove the seat and the gas tank in order to gain access to the uh, coil packs for the spark plugs. And then find a spot where I'm gonna place the module and everything on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then once that's done, I'll come back to you guys and then show you what I'm doing. All right, so is it just me or is KTM's hard to work on? If anyone owns a KTM or an RC8, please let me know that I'm not the only one that, that feels the pain of freaking taking this bike apart. So we got the fuel tank on the ground right there, which that's a nightmare to take off every single time. Um, let's see, we got the little side pieces off right here. And then in order to get the tank off, you have to uh, loosen up the uh, subframe here. So loosen up in the back and then in the front and then this whole thing pivots in order to uh, get the tank out. And then just if you guys haven't seen this yet, this is what the throttle bodies and everything look like up top here. So you got the air filter. So the owner before me had a cane in there and I plan on changing that out to a sprint. But yeah, so here's the air box. And in order to get to the front two spark plugs, I have to rip this whole thing out. And like that's, it's freaking crazy. So I already got the side panel off on this side. You can barely see it. But as you can see, so this, even though this is a twin um, cylinder, it has uh, four spark plugs because it's a twin spark. So there's the two spark plugs back here. And then there's no way I can get to the front two without removing this entire air box. So I did not know that the, you know, I was gonna have to break the entire bike down just to get to the two front spark plugs. So it's almost like, man, I should just go ahead and change the spark plugs while I'm at it. But it's not time for that yet. So um, I think once I do this once, um, it might be a little easier the second time, but oh my gosh, like this is taking forever just to install a quick shifter. So I'm going to keep uh, pushing and then uh, I'll get back to you guys. All right. So on the next episode of things I hate about the RC8, man, this thing has been a nightmare so far. Okay. So here's the two spark plugs in the back, pretty easy to get to. And then the ones in the front, I found a little hole down in here. Maybe I can get to it right there. And then there's the second one right there. If I can get my hands down in there and disconnect those plugs, I may be able to do it without um, taking the whole air box out. And uh, there's the wiring harness right there. So I just gotta get it connected and then just route the wires all the way to the back to the module. And then, you know, mess around with the actuator down there and then we should be good to go. But whew, man, this is, this is kicking my butt, y'all. All right, guys, so progress has been made. All right, so I got the cover back on the air box here. Um, I was able to not take the air box off. I found a little spot in there where I was able to uh, get the wires connected and everything. And it looks a little messy right now, but that's all right. We're gonna um, clean that all up here once we you know, test everything out. So I got the uh, actuator on here. Actually didn't end up needing the, the rod. It came with a 50 millimeter rod, but it didn't match up with the, uh, with the stock one here. So all I did, was use the actuator in the, um, I think they're called hem joints or, or whatever, but the little lollipop joints here. And it's the exact same length that I need. Ran the cable up, I'll clean that up here in a second. Got my uh, module put down in there in the box here. 
So that's kind of where I got it. And then I'm gonna clean all these wires up, get everything connected and everything, test her out and hopefully everything works out just fine. All right, and we're outside. So I finally got everything kind of buttoned up and everything and good to go last night. Um, it was getting too late, it was like three in the morning or whatever. But for those of you that have an RCA or you're looking at getting one and you're wondering how you know the, the uh, anatory quick shifter goes on and everything, I kind of didn't you know run through everything that you need to take off and I'm just gonna run through that real quick for you guys. So first things first, you gotta get this tank off, like it has to come off uh, no matter what. So you have uh, two bolts right there, you have two bolts in the front. Then you have these side panels that go right here on the sides and they just pull off. They also have another uh, screw that goes somewhere right in there. And then once you do that, you wanna take off these hoses right here to the fuel tank. So you have two, um, one on each side. And then you have the uh, main fuel line that's under here. It's kind of dark, but there's a main fuel line that's under here that you need to disconnect. There's also a connector under here that you need to disconnect and then another connector right under here that you need to disconnect. Once you do that, the tank comes off. And also, in order to do that, to make sure things go smoothly, you're gonna wanna loosen up the rear subframe in order to get this thing out. So KTM makes it kind of a pain in the butt to work on, but you wanna loosen the rear bolt right there and then take those two bolts out, one on each side, um, in order to get the uh, bolts out. So subframe falls down, tank comes out. Once that's done, you'll get to your air box and then it's self-explanatory, just pull those screws off, take the air, top of the air box lid off and then there will be a little circle at the top underneath the air filter with three screws. Take those screws out and you'll be able to have access to the uh, front spark plug. That way when you run your, your cable through, you'll be able to do that. And also to make things easier as well, you're probably gonna have to take off this side panel here. You're probably gonna have to loosen this panel and then um, loosen up your air duct that comes through right here so you can get to that other spark plug because it's like right there. It's like right up in there, but you can't even really get to it without removing the entire air box. And then uh, what you do is just go ahead and run your wiring harness, connect everything up, run it to the back here. And then you can see this is how I have my module. I just set it right back here. I put it with some Velcro also on the bottom portion of it just for uh, vibrations and stuff like that. Then you're gonna go ahead and run power. So I got mine connected to the battery terminals, but the instructions say that you can also take your positive lead and connect it to something, you know, in the fuse area or wherever you have like your tail light or something like that. So that way this module isn't on 24 seven, but, uh, but you can't really, uh, I guess help that. I mean, I, I'm not that smart when it comes to electrical, so I'm just gonna go this route. All right, so once you're done with all that, next you're gonna you're gonna do a, what's called a driveway test so basically you're gonna bring the bike outside you're gonna sit on it you know hold the clutch in and then shift all the way into sixth gear um, you know while it's running once you do that you're you're gonna rev it up to 5,000 rpm and then shift like you're gonna shift into the next gear and you should hear a distinct uh, you know, disruption in the, uh, in the exhaust note. So that just lets you know that the, uh, the quick shifter is working. So what I'll do right now, we'll start it up, make sure everything's working and then I will show you guys uh, how, that, how that test works. All right, so instructions say, go ahead and start and make sure everything's good. Got a little green light on the module. So we'll go ahead and start it. I don't know if you guys heard that uh, exhaust note, you heard where it was like eh, 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 every time I tried to shift into the next gear. Um, that just means that it's actually working. So it's cutting spark 
to the uh, spark plugs allowing you, you know, to, to quick shift. All right, guys, that's it. So I'm gonna get this thing all buttoned up. I'm gonna get all the wires, you know, tucked away and make them look pretty and everything. And then we'll get this thing out on the road and show you guys how the quick shifter performs. All right, guys, so it sucks. I ran out of daylight <laughs> and I wanted to get this video finished. So I figured I'd just go do a little night ride here. And uh, so far, so good, guys. So uh, let me shift down the second here. All right, here we go. <laughs> yeah she works that's awesome it just sucks because i don't know how well you guys can hear the uh exhaust and everything and the mic on the gopro just because i don't have an exhaust on this yet so it's still kind of quiet and i get a lot of wind noise in this helmet but yeah man after all of that craziness of working on this thing i tell you what man this thing is a nightmare to work on it's a it's a beautiful bike it's freaking powerful but man maintenance is is not its strong point at all <laughs> So literally to even do the simplest task on this thing you have to tear a lot of stuff apart and I, I hate that that the gas tank it doesn't just tilt up you have to like remove the whole thing every single time and you know continuing to disconnect those connectors and the fuel lines and stuff I think it would be bad on it over time but I don't know man whatever um, I, I don't mind working on the bike and everything it's kind of fun but at the same time it's like holy moly you know it's just it's time consuming it just takes longer to do certain things but hey it is what it is but yeah so like i said before decided to go with anatory i know there's other brands out there like translogic heel tech um what's another one uh i know i'm missing something out there and then you know there's the oem uh uh quick shifters and stuff like that that you can get for them but i wanted to try this out like i said uh a fellow rider also uses anatory and um yeah i mean decent price i mean you know most of your quick shifters are kind of expensive but not too bad and i've heard good things about this one um and then as far as the install goes you know this one taps into your coil packs on your on your spark plugs i know some of them go into your ecu and stuff like that but uh overall not bad but yeah guys i usually don't ride at night and the headlight on this thing sucks <laughs> i mean there's that there's the brights yeah, I need to switch this out to some LEDs or HIDs or something. I wish they had a projector headlight uh, conversion you could get for this, and they don't. I tried looking, I don't see anything. Man, the shift is so smooth. It's quick and smooth. I mean, hence it's a quick shifter. <laughs> but man, it's 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 nice. And I wish it was uh, auto blip down as well. Um, you know, that's that's some extra stuff you have to pay for if you want to get one of those. This one doesn't have that, I don't believe. Um, I know some of the higher end ones do. I had it when I had my Jixer 1000. Um, it's nice, but to be honest with you, I really didn't use, you know, the auto blip down really all that much. I'd rather just do it myself. I kind of enjoy doing that, you know, revving the throttle and <laughs> rev matching. All right, go one more time here. <laughs> oh yeah. Perfect, perfect. Man, I know the last time I rode this in the last video, <laughs> trying to race and shift and everything, I've been so used to using the quick shifter. It's like once you go quick shift, you don't want to go back. But yeah, guys, other things to note um, that you can't really see right now, but because it's dark, but I got the domino grips on here. I got the Vortex levers, which feel amazing, by the way. Um, I think they feel better than my CRGs that I have in my R6. I got the huge windscreen on, and then we finally got the quick shifter. So there's still a few more things here and there I want to do to this bike, most definitely. And the next thing is definitely get an exhaust on here. 
but uh yeah man i'm loving this bike so far guys uh, i got some more things to come you know after i've had this bike for a little while i'll probably do another video um you know things that i like about it things that i hate about it and uh you know just keep you guys updated on uh, how i'm liking it and everything so until then guys if you're new to the channel be sure to subscribe i hope this video um helps you guys out if you plan on getting an anatory uh Woo! did you see that that was a possum almost ran over <laughs> Oh man, see this is why I don't like riding at night. <laughs> but yeah guys, like I said before, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. If you're liking what you see, give me a like. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.